Somebody. Hey Jamie. Viewer number one. Hey Chris. Hey uh <laughs> Elder Mebbin. Hey Brittany. I'm a little bit late. Hey Byron. Hey Graham. I'm a little bit late, but uh we on here. Um praise. Hey Rob. Mind of God, I, Brother King. Ooh, look at me. Um, I'm alright. I'm a little tired. Um, but of course, I'm good. Hey, Byron. Um, yeah, we're coming to the last week of school. Well, this is the last week of school, rather. Um, so that last stretch. You know how we all acted when we were younger, when we were in school that last week. Everybody want to act crazy. So that's what I'm kind of dealing with at work. Listen, rest is coming. It's just not coming fast enough. But we're giving praise. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this together so that the phone don't fall. All right, I think we're good. <laughs> you ready for it? Hallelujah. All right, cool. We got one more minute. Uh, let everybody get on. Just listen to this a little bit. Um, tonight is going to be real, real, um, real, real chill, I think. Um, excuse me if I get excited. I've been kind of on this for about the last day or so, probably about two days now. And it's real simple. It's real simple. Um, so we'll start in about another minute or so. Um, this is another just like random clip I found on YouTube of Miranda Curtis singing. Great are you, Lord. Just real simple. Great are you. That's it. Like, nothing extravagant, nothing deep, nothing all in the moon and stars, but simply he's great. All right? I'm sorry. Um, hey, Glenn. All right, so, cool. We're going to start praying. Or we're going to start with prayer, and then we're going to get right into it. Um, we've got about 55 minutes to get this done, so... <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we honor you, we give you praise, we give you glory because you're good and because you're God. We thank you for this time of fellowship, this time of interaction. Father, we're praying, oh God, that somebody would be encouraged, oh God, in the fact that you are God and that you are God over their lives and in the midst of this circumstance. Excuse me. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, I don't know where that burp came from. Up and out. So, tonight, we're going to be talking really, really, really quickly, really simply about he's God, right? Hey, Jermaine. Nothing extravagant, nothing deep, but literally about the fact that he is God. So yesterday on my way to the metro, I was walking to, uh, to the metro, going to work. I was having my little daily conversation with, with the Lord. And one of the things that he just really kind of, I, I don't even know if he dropped it on me, if I just like had a aha moment. But I was like, you're God. And... Like, I was blown away by the fact that he's God because of all the things that I started to think about. And I, I think I made a post yesterday about, like, even when we don't understand all of his godness, the fullness of who he is, the fullness of what he does and why he does what he does, the way he does it, even when we cannot find it within ourselves, within our human understanding, within our finite knowledge to, to grasp who he is and what he is and how big he is how great he is he is still god and i was thinking about how sometimes you know we as people when it comes down to like our um hey daniel and i'll read the scripture in a minute but how we as people how we when it's time to validate something when it's time to validate someone we need somebody else to validate that person so if i say that i am a licensed therapist then i had to take a test and other people had to you know score the test or approve me to be a licensed therapist like i just can't walk out of my house and say i'm a licensed therapist because i do not have a license and the reason i don't have a license is because i have not taken the test and people have not said you can be licensed or you're licensed in this area right um i cannot go 
to a hospital and just start performing surgeries because I think or because I say that I'm a doctor. They're going to say, if you're a doctor, where's your certificate? Where's your certification? Where's your doctor papers? And listen, if you go to a hospital and somebody tell you that they're a doctor and you don't see no doctor papers, you need to figure out what's going on. But when I was thinking about this yesterday and the fact that God is God and that he is who he is, he does not need validation or or he doesn't need a certification. He doesn't need to be bona fide or backed by anybody. He is who he is, whether we accept it or not, whether we believe it or not, whether we like it or not. He is God. So uh, we have two scriptures for tonight. Isaiah 45 is a bit long. So we'll get down to verse Hmm. Go down to Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 5. It says, I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you though you have not acknowledged me. So that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. And so throughout this book, throughout this chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 45, he's talking about all these things that he does and that he can do and that he is and all these things. And the thing that I just talked about, it says, listen, even though you have not acknowledged me, I'm still God. There are people, countless of people who do not know uh, Jesus and, or know the Lord in the pardon of the sins. They, they, they've not come into the saving knowledge of him, but that does not stop him from being God. Um, when it comes down to musical uh, artists and stuff like that, you can be the hottest person on the block, the hottest person on, on the charts and all of that. But the minute that the public no longer wants to feed into what you're saying, then you are no longer who you are. You're, you're no longer validated. You're no longer uh, credible in that way. Um, we saw this. Uh, we saw this happen. Hey, Vadim with Kim Burrell a couple of months ago. You know, at one point she was the greatest. Uh, you know, jazzy kind of vocalist or whatever, but she made a statement and it rubbed some people the wrong way. And now all of a sudden we have not heard as much about her as we used to. People don't, ooh, excuse me, I'm really, really tired. Excuse me, guys. People don't feature her as much as they used to. People aren't, aren't, aren't really talking or speaking or whatever about her as much as they used to because that's something that people did. People, like, not to say that God's hand was not on her life. I'm not saying that. But when it comes down to people, we have an, an uh, we have a, potential we have the potential rather to either exalt people or demote them based on how we feel but when it comes down to god he said listen no matter how you feel no matter what you feel the bible says again isaiah 45 chapter 5 though you have not acknowledged me i'm still god and so when i was thinking about that i said listen you are God all by yourself. You don't need any help. You don't need assistance. You don't need support. You don't need me to validate you. You don't need me to, to back you up. Because whether I say that you're God or not, whether I acknowledge the fact that you are God or not, that does not stop you from being God. You are the God that heals. You're faithful. You're loving. You're just. You're true. You're righteous. You're all of these things. And at the end of the day, if I cannot find any other word to say to describe you, the I can literally say you're God. Hey, Terry, listen, got you in a couple minutes. You are God. And beside you, there is not another. So that means that, listen, because I, I am so much God, I am, I am so much confident and I'm so locked into this title, so locked into this thing that there's not another that could, could even step on the same platform as me and stand in the, in the shoes that I stand in because I'm too great. I'm too heavy. I'm too weighty. I'm too much for anybody else to compare to. And at the end of the day, after all the accolades that we can give him, you know, he's the, and I was talking to a friend of mine about, Somebody that I know that, you know, who, who can pray, right? You know, they pray. When they pray, you know, they have a lot of words. You know, they give God all these, you know, you are the God of the moon and the sun and the stars. And you are the one that created. Like, and that's great and that's wonderful. But at the end of the day, if I cannot uh, think about all the things that you've done, if I can't think about whatever I'm going through, it's so, so painful, it's so traumatizing, it's so traumatic to me that I can't even focus on the fact that you created the stars and the moon and the sun. Hey, why you I can't think about any of that stuff. The one thing that I can remember and the one thing that should give me some encouragement is that you are God and that no matter what I'm going through, you're God enough to bring me out. When the three Hebrew boys, when they were uh, getting ready to be thrown into the fiery furnace, they didn't give God, uh, and the things that we call him, hey, Vest, the things and all of these things and wonderful great names that we call him are really to me like nicknames for him, right? You're a healer. That's a nickname. You're a deliverer. That's a nickname. But what is his name? Who is he? He is God. His name is Jesus. And so those are the things that, you know, all the, 
great and uh, powerful, all those other things that we call him, those are great. But at the end of the day, if I can't call on, on the healer because I may not be able to get those words, I ought to be able to say Jesus. At the end of the night or at the, uh, when I'm sleeping and I feel like something is choking me and suffocating me, listen. That, listen, if I, I can't say healer and the demon released, huh? I can't say uh, 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 deliverer and be released. If I call it the name of Jesus, then that's when it lifts and that's when it releases. No, but, but it, it's not by any other name. And I'm stuttering a lot because I'm so excited because he said, listen, I am God. Listen, it says, for the sake of Jacob, my servant uh, of of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honor, though you do not acknowledge me. So again, he's talking about, listen, the fact that you don't acknowledge me, it does not move me. Uh, as a human, when I speak to a person and they don't acknowledge the fact that I've spoken to them, that personally vexes me. There's a person that I work with, so now I don't even bother speaking to her because I know she's not going to speak. You say good morning enough and they just keep going. Listen, so that bothers me and that causes me to sometimes act a little different. God said, listen, whether you speak to me or not, whether you acknowledge who I am or that I am or not, I'm still God. You don't have to acknowledge me because there are many people that will go to that, that will die and not acknowledge me. But it does not stop me from being God. And listen, I'm not calling on the nicknames because I need God to show up. When the, uh, back to the story, they said, listen. If we get into this fiery furnace, the God that we serve, they didn't say the, the healer that we serve. They didn't say the way maker that we serve. They didn't say the promise keeper. They said the God that we serve is able to deliver. And even if he doesn't, he's still able. Huh? Even if he does not, he is still able. He's able to deliver. So he's able to do all the things and all the attributes and all the nicknames that we've given him. He's able to make a way out of nowhere. He, he keeps his promise. He is all these things, but at the end of the day and at the beginning thereof and all through in between, he is still God. Listen, <laughs> it didn't say she didn't say, I want to know the healer of Abraham. But then she said, I want to know the God of Abraham, because the God of Abraham is the one that made the promise and kept it. The God of Abraham is the one that made provision or made promise of provision and provided. The God of Abraham was the one that said, I will bless you. And, and from you will come the you know, so many people that you won't even be able to uh, count them. Listen, there will be uh, so many people that have come from your loins. Say, hey, Nikita, that it'll be like the sands of the sea. Hey, Sean, listen, I want to know the God, not the healer. Because if I get to know God, then the healing comes because I'm knowing God. I'm knowing a God that heals. If I get to know him, then deliverance comes because he's a God that delivers. If I get to know him, then I know that healing comes because, you know, all of these other things. But I don't want to just know you as the healer. I want to know you as God. I want to know you as the one that rules and super rules, the one that reigns and reigns over everything. I want to know you as God, not as any other thing. When you get to know Justin, you get to know all the other things. You get to know uh, Just Man, as my family calls me. You get to know Jay Ruff, as some of my friends call me. You get to know uh, uh, <laughs> the Scary Prophet, whatever you want to call it. When you get to know Justin, you get to know all of those things. But if you only know me as Jay Ruff, then you're missing a part of me that, that other people ha have gotten to know. If you only know me as Mr. Justin, the teacher, then you're missing a part of me that other people may know. But listen, when you get to know me, Excuse me, when you get to know me for who I am and all that I am and all that I'm able to do, then there's nothing that I can uh, that I'll be able to keep from you because you know me. Right. Uh, my sister, she's not on here tonight, but she was preaching a message one time and she was talking about the power of a name. And she said she had a lot of nicknames. And so she said, when you call me by a certain name, then people would get a certain response out of me. If you call me by my neighborhood nickname back when I was, you know, doing what I was doing, running my dirt, doing whatever I was doing with Pookie name, then you're going to get that person. But you may not want that person all the time. If you get the person that you see in church, because some of us are living uh, a couple of different lives. But if you get the person that you see at church, if you call me Minister Ruffin, if you call me Prophet Ruffin, then you might get a different person. But no, who wants to know? God is saying, listen, I know that you want to know the healer and I know you want to know the deliverer and the way maker. I know you want to know the bill payer, but who wants to know God? Who wants to know me in the fullness of who I am? He said, because listen, when I come, I come in the fullness of me. Huh? He said, listen, I'm not just coming with, with half of me. But there are times and, and <laughs> there are times that God can only show us so much because if he unloads the weight of who he is on us at one time, we won't be able to handle it. We'll probably be walking around here crazy because of how he will blow our minds. But listen, he said, if you get to know me as God, 
all those other things are going, they come inevitably because you get to know me. Who wants to know me for who I am? Because when you get to know me, you get to know my heart. You get to know what, what, what I'm concerned about. You get to know what I'm passionate about. You get to feel the burden that I feel. That's a level of intimacy, a level of knowledge that not many people get because they want to know the attributes. They, they're going after the attributes of him, but they're not going after him. A lot of us go to God with our hands out, but not with our hearts open. Because when your heart is open to him, even if he doesn't put anything in your hand, you still love him. When your heart is open for God, even if he doesn't bless you with anything that you think you might need right then and there, you're still satisfied with his presence because you get to know him. And the only thing that I could say, and, and you know, a lot of times in church we hear, you know, worship God for who he is. At that point, I did not ask him for anything. I didn't ask him for anything. I said, God, I'm thanking you right now for being God, because in you being God, you've been faithful. You have provided. You have blessed. You've healed. You've delivered. You see what I'm saying? You've done all of that thing just by you being God. And I was too simple to realize that you were still being God as a healer. You were being God, but you are manifesting yourself as a deliverer. You were being God, but you are manifesting yourself in that moment as a provider. And I started to seek you for your nicknames, but I didn't want to know you for who you really were. But he said, listen, I'm bringing you now into a season where I'm showing you me so that the next time somebody goes and says something crazy, you say, listen, that's not the God that I serve. And a lot of times what we do is we put we, we take the attributes of God and we try to put them on people. You know, well, God is loving, so his people should be loving. God is this, so his people should be this. And then when people are not, then we say that God is not. No, what we're saying is that sometimes people can't uh, measure up to the level of the attributes that God is showing or displaying. But that does not stop him from being God. If somebody were to come out to, uh, uh, now and say that Justin is a crackhead because I know that I'm not, I wouldn't be. Fa well, granted, I might be a little phased by it, but it wouldn't stop the fact that I am who I am. You see what I'm saying? There are things that have happened in my life when people told me, listen, if I were you, I would just give up. But that did not stop who I, and I had to remember who I was. Listen, the Lord said, I swear by my own name. I swear by my godness that I'm going to do what I said I would do. And if I wasn't able to do it, then I would not have spoken it. Listen, I don't want to just know God as the promise keeper. I want to know God for God, because when I know him for who he is, then the promises are already kept. Then the ways that he promised me he will make, they're already made. And I just have to wait for the time and for the day of manifestation because I am knowing him. Listen, when you get to know a person for who they are, you get to know all the ins and outs, the nicknames. You get to know the different sides of them. You get to know them when they're sad, when they're happy. You get to know them for all of those things because you know them. My grandmother knows me. So even if I'm trying to joke and laugh and all of that, she still knows when there's something wrong with me. Why? Because she knows me. Hey, so far as me and my grandmother were talking, uh, yes, I think it was yesterday, and she said, listen, don't make any plans for this day because we're going, I need you to go somewhere with me, she said, and we need a clown, right? If she only knew the clown side of me when I was going through something deep, she wouldn't know how to handle that because she only knows one side of me. And so the problem is when God is trying to urge us and push us into a different place, when he's trying to share with us his burdens, we ignore it and we move on from those things. Why? Not because he's not trying to share that with us, but because we don't know that side of him. God, I don't know the compassionate side of you because that'll cause me not to be selfish anymore. So I only want to know you as, as the God that gives judgment or the, because when I'm, perform, when I'm pronouncing judgment, then I can really just be selfish and really just focus a lot on me and uh, or, or, or all of those other things. I only want to know you as the God that heals, but I don't want to know you as a God that loves because I'm not ready to love people selflessly like that. I, I'm still a little selfish right now, so I don't want to do that. But he said, no, if you know me, then you need to know all of me. You will have to suffer sometimes because I was the one who suffered, but I'll give you grace and strength to endure. But do you really want to know me? How bad do you want to know me? And it was funny because uh, somebody <laughs> that was interested in me sent me a text today and said, listen, I want to try to rekindle what we had. I said, listen, you can't do that because you don't know me. And not only do you not know me, you didn't want to get to know me because there's a lot more to me than what you saw. But you weren't willing to go the extra mile to learn me in that way. God is saying, listen, there's a whole lot more to me than what you see. But because you're not willing to learn me, then I can't show you. He said, listen, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So that a, a yoke, when you look at it uh, by definition, it's a, a tool or type of something that was used to hold two animals together so that when they walk, they will walk the same path. They will walk the same way. You can't.
can't know God if you're not walking with him. If you're always trying to jump ahead of him, you can't know him. If you're always trying to let him lead you and you never want to come up to where he is, then you can't know him that way. So that's why sometimes, listen, God, you're a healer. Yes, I'm a healer, but what else am I? Because you don't need me to heal in this moment. You need me to give you some strength, but you don't want to know me as a God that's strong, uh, that, that provides strength. Because in order for me to provide strength, you might have to be weak. And nobody wants to be seen as weak. Nobody wants to be viewed as a weaker vessel. But my thing is, listen, if that's when I'm going to find your strength, I'm going to be weak all the time. Until you strengthen me to walk through this thing. Because I know that if I'm weak, you're made strong. That means that you're closely walking with me because you're helping me come out of this thing. But if I'm always trying to be strong, I got it, I got it, I can do it myself. I never have any room for God to come in. A friend of mine, she uh, preached some uh, a while back. She said, listen, when you come to the end of yourself, then you find the beginning of God. Nobody wants to find the beginning of God because we always try to have all the answers. But he said, listen, if you know me, you'll know that I'll give you the answers that you need in due time. But you're just going to have to wait on it a little bit. Do you want to wait enough? Do you want to learn me in your waiting? Do you want to know who I am while you're waiting? Because there's a lot of things that you can learn when you're waiting for something. When you're in the doctor's office, you, you, know, you pick up one of the magazines, you read them. You get to learn a whole bunch of stuff about the human body and about systems and about cycles within your body that you may not have known if you did not wait. Are you, uh, do you want to wait enough to know him? <laughs> There's a song that the old folks used to sing that said, listen, I'm going to wait for, Je I'm going to wait on Jesus. I'm going to wait right here and I'm going to stand right here and study myself. And the only way that I can really study myself is if I get to know him because he made me in his image. Okay, so when I get to know him, I get to know myself because whose image was I created in? I wasn't created in my own image. I was created in his. So if I want to know something about myself, who do I go to but the person that created me after them? Oh, okay. That's why a lot of times we, uh, we as people uh, finding our ancestry and our history and our family history is so important because sometimes you don't know who you are until you know where you came from. But if you said that you created me in your image and the things that you made, that that was fearfully and wonderfully made and all these great things that you say about me being created, that I was created with a purpose. I can't learn my purpose if I don't know you because you were the one who gave me the purpose in the earth. I can't understand the fullness of my God-given assignment while I'm here if I don't go to the one who gave me the assignment in the first place. But do you, listen, he said, do you want to know me as God? It's great that you've known me as all those other things, but now I want to give you another level of knowledge. I want to mature you in this season. I want to mature you at this time. Can I show you who I am as God? I want to know the God that spoke to Moses out of a bush that was not consumed but was on fire. Hey, Maria, I want to know the God that told, uh, told him, he said, listen, go and sacrifice your son. And at the sacrificing hour, he provided a ram in the bush. I want to know that God. But I don't just want to know him as the God that provides the ram in the bush. I want to know him because I want to know, God, where are you going with this? I want to get to know you so much so that even though you're telling me to sacrifice something that I love dearly, because I know that you're not going to keep me out like this, that you're going to provide at some point. I want to get to know you so that my faith in you can be strengthened. Hey, Maria, I want to get to know you so that my faith in you can be strengthened so that when you're leading me in something that seems off and that seems off-putting and disheartening, I still trust you in the midst of that. In the midst of homelessness, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of death of loved ones or whatever may be going on, even in the midst of a bad doctor's diagnosis, I want to know the God that says, listen, I'm not moved by the things that are going on in your life. And if you got to know me as God, then you wouldn't be moved either. Because you know that I provide for my children. If you would get to know me the way that I want you to know me, the things that are shifting you wouldn't shift you the way that they do because you would understand my purpose and my intent behind it. But you don't want to know me as God. You want to know me for the things that I can do. You want to know me as a healer. And that's great. But who do you know me as when you don't need to be healed? You want to know me as a provider. And that's great. But when you don't necessarily need provision in that moment, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And if you're saying something about me, how do you know that that's who I am? Because you've experienced it. Yes, but I don't want to listen. It, 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 hear me when I say this. I don't want to just know the healer God. I want to know God, God. I want to know the God that says, listen, when I draw you into my presence, the healing, the deliverance, the salvation, all the things that you would spend all this time petitioning me for, you would already get. So now, even since yesterday, my prayer is God be God. 
And in that, that's a loaded statement because I'm saying, listen, do what it is that you do best. And that's rule and reign over my life. I'm surrendering myself to you in a different way. And I'm, I'm asking you to give me another revelation of you. Show me who you are, not necessarily by your nicknames, but by the character and the nature of you. I want to know God, God, not the healer, God. That's great that you heal, but I want to know you for you. And I just began to tell him who he was to me. And even in that, that was a limited revelation because he's not been to me everything that he is. He is so much more than a healer, a deliverer and a provider. But those are the things that I've needed him to be more often. So that's who I know him as. But what about the God that resurrects? What about the God that makes uh, limbs grow where there were once nubs? What about that God? What about the God of the miraculous? Because a lot of the things that we call uh, call miracles are not necessarily miracles. Okay, but we're not going to get into that. That's a Facebook, t- uh, that's a Tuesday talk for another night. I want to know the God that performs the type of miracles that he did back then. I don't drink wine, but I want to know the God that turned water into wine. Because I need to know the transfer- the transforming power of you. Huh? I need to know the God that can speak a word from where he is and, and change somebody's situation way down the road. Because there were times that he spoke in the Bible and said, listen, your servant is going to be healed. And this is at that same hour, which means at the very moment that person was healed. We spending all of this time laying hands on people. But I want to get to know you so much so that I can be uh, moved under the unction of you to speak a word from my living room and somebody at the hospital be healed. But it doesn't come if I only know you as one uh, uh, only know you as one part of who you are. I want to know. Listen. You see what I'm saying? I want to know the God that can speak from where he is and we get results way over, way across the water somewhere. I want to know the God that says, listen, that can give you the insight to say, listen, this is what my burden is at this moment in time. This is what I'm grieving over. And you pick up the burden of the Lord and pray where he is and pray concerning that because you know him for who he is. Because when you get to know a person, you get to know what they're passionate about. When you get to know a person, you get to know the things that move them and that allow their heart to be when you get to know a person. But if you don't know a person, then you won't pick up on the signs when they're going through. And so the, <laughs> there have been times when the Lord allowed me to feel just a glimpse or just a portion of of his emotions and the portion of the things that he's felt. And it literally crushed me. But I was like, God, I thank you because you're allowing me to know you in a way that I have not known you before. Hey, Kendra, you're allowing me to know you in a way that I may not have known you before. But I, it, that, that won't happen if I'm only seeking you for what you can do. I want to know you for who you are. And your word says that you are God. So if you're God, I want to get to know God. I, listen, all of these other things are great. It's great that we get to know the healer. The healer is in the room and that's great and that's wonderful. But I want to know God. Huh? Because even if he does not heal, it does not mean that he's not God. You see what I'm saying? And that's the thing. When when we get to know him by his nicknames and by his attributes, when he doesn't perform the attributes, hey, Nina, the way that we want him to, then we start to think, well, maybe he's not God because he's not moving in, in that way. But maybe it's not his will to move in that way at that time, but it does not negate the fact that he's God. This the, <laughs> Isaiah 45, uh, verse 5, uh, uh, Isaiah 45 and 5 says, I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. So all these other things and people that we're trying to get to know are not satisfying and are not filling the need and the void that we have because they are not him. Hey, Adam, even when we do not acknowledge him, hey, Tanya, even when we do not um, recognize him, even when we cannot compute or, or comprehend or understand The vastness of who he is. He is still that person. And he says, listen, I don't have to prove anything to you because my record speaks for itself. So if I never perform another miracle, if I never perform another healing, and if I never give you another deliverance, I've already showed you that I'm God. Listen. (laughs) Kendra, when I tell you this thing wrecked me on my way to work yesterday, and I couldn't say anything but God, you're God. That's it. You are God. And and even when I did not have enough sense to recognize that you were God, you were still God. Huh? Listen, the whole row, even when I didn't because of what I was going through, because I was looking for you to manifest yourself in the attributes of you and the things that you do. I was looking for a performance because that's what we said. There's going to be a performance. And we huck da 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 da. That's great. But if he does not perform, he's still God. Oh, OK. Nobody wants to talk about that. God, I need you to heal my grandmother. I need you to heal. But if you don't heal grams, he's still God. And 
even if I don't accept the fact that he's God, it does not neg- it does not stop him from being God. He says, listen, I'm sitting on the circle of the earth and I'm watching it turn. And if I stop it, it won't. If I say don't turn, then the earth will not turn. You see what I'm saying? I don't, listen, even if I'm not. If I don't accept the little portion of you that I know, if I don't accept that to be God, then it doesn't change the fact that you're still God. And when I try to put somebody else in your place, you're still God. You're not moved by my temporal decisions and my fickle emotions. You're still God. He says, listen, I am immutable, which means I do not change. And I don't change, number one, for anybody, but I'm definitely not going to change for a fickle, double-minded, unstable person. Oh, okay. Listen, this is what he said. He said, listen, I am the immutable God. And before I let one drop or tittle of my word fail, everything is going to shut down. Listen, he said, I'm God. And the fact that I told you I'm God means that all the things that I've said, I'm obligated to do. But in the event that you stop believing me, I'm still God. I'm still God. There's nothing that you can do to make me out of a liar because at the end of the day, at the beginning thereof, and all the time in between, I am still God. Case closed. Hey, Pastor Harvey. He says, listen, I'm still God. Case closed. That's it. So whether you believe it or not, it's on you. Whether you accept it or not, it's on you. And whether you still go after the characteristics and the attributes of me, it's still on you. But I'm letting you know that at the end of the day, At the beginning thereof, I'm still God. So when you go to sleep, I'm God. When you wake up, I'm God. When you're going through what you're going through, whether it be a a physical ailment, financial difficulty, I am still God. And if you get to know me as God, all the things and all the attributes of me come with that. If a person knows Justin, they're going to know my attitude. They're going to know when I'm happy, when I'm sad. They're going to get the clown side of me. They're going to get the loving, caring side of me, which I don't necessarily show too often. But you're going to get all of that when you get to know me. So wrapped inside of this one being is all the things that we need. But rather than we get uh, rather than us getting to go, (laughs) getting to know that one, we want to get all these different things. That's like me saying, listen, in this bottle of water is everything that I need, right? Let's just say that this was medicine. And I, you know, some of us are on a whole, whole bunch of different pills. Let's just say that in this bottle was all the pills that I needed to take. And that's like me saying, well, you know what? I know that all the pills that I need to take are in that bottle, but I'm going to still go out and get all these other pills. And I'm going to have my Monday set and my Tuesday set and my Wednesday set. When he's saying, listen, if you would just get to know me, all the other things are included in that. But we want to sacrifice. We want to settle for the lesser because it's easier for me to get the healer than for me to get to know him, because that's going to take me a little while. That's going to take me spending some time to really come into an understanding. And even in that, I'm still not going to know all that there is to know. But he says, listen, how much are you willing to pursue me so that I can show you another uh, side of me? How much are you willing to, to, to chase after me so that I can reveal myself to you in a different way and still let you know that I'm God? Uh, like I said, the three Hebrew boys didn't say, listen, the God that they, they didn't say that the healer I serve or the deliverer I serve or the way maker that I serve. They said, listen, the God that I serve is able to deliver. And if he does it, he's still able. Whether he decides to do it for us or not, he's still able. We don't necessarily know if he's going to bring us out of this fire. But if we die in the fire, it's not because he doesn't have the power to do it. It's because he had the power to do it and he just chose not to do it in that way. And that means we're going up to see him. Listen, I want to get to know God. I want to know the God that cleansed lepers. Huh? Okay. The God that can tell somebody who's been sick for 38 years, listen, you're healed today. And you get up and you take your mat and walk. I want to know the God, listen, that, hey, let me, hey, Monique, I want to know the God that wrote the book, that breathed and that inspired the hands of men. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Come on, Kobo. The God that inspired men to write the book that we're living off and feasting off of now. Listen, he's, (laughs) listen, when Moses went and told the children of Israel that, listen, God is about to, listen, he sent me to help y'all come out of here. He said, well, God, if they ask me who sent me. What am I supposed to tell them? He said, tell them that I am that I tell them that I am sent you. Like, what you mean? 
I am God. And in me being God is deliverance. Because listen, he didn't say tell them that the deliverer and that the healer and that the way maker and that the provider and that the uh, Red Sea opener and the Red Sea closer. And he didn't say all of that. He said, listen, tell them that I am sent you. I am God. And in God sending you, in them knowing and in them following God, they walked into provision. They got deliverance. They were saved from their enemies. You see what I'm saying? There was strength provided. There was, <laughs> there were things that they need. Listen, I am that I am. So that means whatever you need me to be, whenever you need me to be, and however you need me to be, I can be that if you would only get to know me. I want to show you that if you would only get to know me. He didn't give them all these nicknames and uh, all these other things. I didn't do all of these. Great. Get to know me. Follow God and all the things will come. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and, all, and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So if we seek him and if we try to get a better understanding of his kingdom and how he functions and operates, all the things that we need will be added unto us. And that's not just material things or, or monetary things or anything like that. But no, the revelation that we need will be added unto us. The revelation that he's a healer, that he's a resurrection in the life, the, re the, the revelation of all the things that we need. Listen, comes with us getting to know him. My friend Vadine, she is somebody that I know. So even when I talk to her, she can't fool me. When I talk to her, I say, girl, what's wrong with you? She can't say, well, nothing's wrong. Girl, OK, lie again. Tell me what the real deal is. And I was talking to my friend Nina. I'm not sure if she's still on, still on here, but one day we were talking and she said, how are you? I said, I'm good. And, you know, I started running down all these different things. She said, OK, that's great. But how are you? Because I know you. I don't just know the side of, uh, of you that says everything is great and, and saves face because things are not really always going. Excuse me, not always going well. <laughs> I mean, she can. And, and vice versa. When I listen here, what's the problem? Let's talk about it. Let's listen, because I know you. I don't just know the side of you that you want me to see. And I don't know the side of you that's convenient for me. You see what I'm saying? But I know you for who you are. I know your works. And because I know you, whenever something's going on, I feel it. There have been times that we can text one, other, uh, one another, be like, well, what's going on with you? Because I, I listen, I picked you up in my spirit and that's not right. How? Listen, who's going to be the person that God can share his heart and his feelings and his emotions with? But he can't do that to people who don't know him. Hey, Sister Nancy, God can't share his heart with people who don't know him. He can't. Listen, William McDowell has a song that says, give me your heart for the nations. But that only comes to people who know him. Give me your heart. I want to feel what you feel when you look down at the earth. Listen, when um, who was it? Lot. When Lot was having this conversation with the Lord, he said, God, what's going like what's happening? He said, listen, if you find 10 people, will you surely spare the people? Well, you spare the entire city for 10 and he couldn't find 10 people that were saved. But Lot was able to bargain with God and say, listen, I understand that you feel in this type of way. But listen, let me see what I can do to try to make sure that the people are saved. Lot had a conversation with God because he knew him. And when you know him, God can share some things with you and you can give somebody else a warning. Could it be that the reason some of our loved ones are dying and going to hell is because God has a word for them, but he can't give it to us because we don't know him. Could it be that the healing that we're waiting for to manifest for some of our loved ones, God wants to bring it through us, but we can't do that because we don't know him. God, I don't know you enough to go and, and heal because I, I, I haven't even picked up on the fact that they're sick. Hey, Prophet Pratt, I haven't even been able to pick up on the fact that they're sick. Why? Because you don't know me. When you know God, he can share some things with you that people won't even be able to tell you. Listen, do you know him? And the old folks used to sing a song, listen, do you know him? That's all. Listen, that's all I want to know. Do you know him? Because if you know him, all the things that come with him come in that package. If you know him, all the things that he is, all the things that he's promised, all those good, great things that we read in the word, they come with him. But if you don't know him, then there's nothing really that he can do. But listen, he said, I want to show you and I want the people to know me, know me as God, know me as the supreme ruler of the universe. So that I can begin to share some things with them. So that I can talk to them about some things. So that I can talk to them about themselves. Because again, you can't know yourself unless you know him. Because you were created in his image. So we're to, a lot of us spend these times and these days and all these things trying to find who we are. Without going to the person who told us, listen, you once were lost but now you're found. Because we haven't fully found ourselves in him. So if he is the one that created me. If he found me when I was lost. 
You know, it's all this amazing grace, how sweet this time to say the rest like me, once was lost, but now I'm found. But if we don't realize that we've been found by him, then we're still walking around lost in a found place, which makes absolutely no sense. Listen, are you one of the people that God is saying, listen, I want you to know me as God, not just as a healer. Not just as a deliverer, not just as a light bill payer, not just as your mortgage or your rent payment. That's great. But when you know me as God, then all of those things come automatically. Are you settling for the lesser when God is giving you access to the greater? I want to know the God of the Bible, period. The God of the Bible. Because in me knowing the God of the Bible, I get to know all the, the facets and the, uh, the, the, the uh, characteristics of him. Loose this tongue. I get to know all of who he is if I get to know that God. But a lot of times we, we only want to know the God that, that provides material things for us. I want to know the God that gives houses. No, because if I'm, I'm finding my apartment, huh? Because I have shelter and I have a place to go and I have a place to live and lay my head and I'm provided for. So even if I don't know the God of the mansion, I know I got a mansion when I get up there and that's good enough for me. Huh? Oh, okay. That's all I'm saying. If I, if I never know the God of the Bugatti or the Ferrari, I want to know the God of maybe the Toyota Camry. Is that the same car? I don't know. Whatever. I want to know the God of the Hyundai if I never get the Porsche. But none of that stuff matters because I want to know you. And if you cannot be found in a Porsche for me, if you cannot be found in a mansion for me, then that's fine. But I want to know you the way that you want to reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. In the power of your res you see what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if it's the same card now. There's a song that I love that says, listen, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to know you in the fullness of who you are as much as I can contain. Because he told Moses, listen, I can only show you my backside. Because if you look at me face to face, you'll die. And from Moses looking at the hinder parts of God, there was a noticeable glow. So listen, when we're going around and we're taking all these pictures trying to get the right lighting... Talking about some, this melanin is popping. Listen, the glow that we have sometimes in our pictures with filters is what Moses walked around with after he left the presence of God. I want to know the God that changes complexions. Huh? I want to know the God. <laughs> I want to know the God of the filter. Huh? Hey, Johnny, I want to know the God of the filter that I don't have to apply on Instagram or Snapchat. Oh, OK. You see what I'm saying? Listen. If Listen, William, if your portion is a Mercedes or a Lexus, then that's fine. But if my grade is a Camry, then I'm fine with that too. Because I know that he's providing for me in that. And that's when I get to know him as God. And then when he's ready to mature me and graduate me to another level, then I might be able to get my Lexus or my Mercedes or my Rose or whatever it is that, 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 that's coming with that next level. But listen, the original, listen, let me tell you something. Moses had the first filter. They said that there's no new thing under the sun. Snapchat was created in the days of Moses. Oh, okay. <laughs> Monique, come out of that. Uh, that. That's hilarious, though. Inside, we'll talk about that later. But listen, long before the days of Instagram, we could lighten this up and put this there, put that there. Listen, Moses said, if you really want to filter that or change the way you look, you need to find yourself in the presence of God. Okay, but nobody wants to do that. Huh? Because it's scary. Because the thing about it is before Moses saw, uh, before he saw the hinder parts of God, God had to take his sight. He said, listen, I'll put my hand over your eyes so that you don't uh, try to sneak a peek and die on the slick. I'll take your sight. And then when I've passed, I'll give you your sight back so that you can see something greater than where you are. And then because of what you see, you see what I'm saying? Because of what you see, there will be a noticeable change, hey, Sister Lisa, about you after you've left my presence. But that only comes, I can only grace those with my presence who are willing to know me, who are willing to hear from me, and who are willing to do what I said do. And e even if that means leading a stiff-necked, rebellious people, do you want to know me in that way? How bad do you want to know me? If you want to know me at all. Because there are times that people say, listen, if a per listen, the Lord of the glowing presence. I want to <laughs> This just blessed me. I want to know the God of the filter. The original filter. Huh? Listen, without this lamp. Huh? Because listen, let me tell you something. If I position myself right on this phone, there will be a glow about me 
that I, listen, and one of my favorite saying is this light though, but I want to know the God that provides light even when there's darkness all around me. Oh, okay. Nobody wants to talk about that though. But again, that takes me putting myself to the side to say, listen, I'm going to sacrifice this time that I could be doing a bunch of other things to sit and get to know you. I want you to come and sit down and talk to me like you spoke to Lot. I want you to come and talk to me like you spoke to the rest of them jokers in the Bible. Like you sat and you talked to Moses. You don't even got to burn up a bush for me. You can sit and come and talk to me right here in my living room while I'm sitting on this couch. But listen, that's going to take me sometimes sitting in the quietness. And a lot of times quietness is uncomfortable for us because we're so used to always hearing, always going. But are you willing to suffer in silence to hear from God and to get to know him? I went to my former church a couple of uh, weeks ago. And the assistant pastor was up there. She was exhorting. And she said, listen, I don't want to just know the God that people talk about. And that's great. But I want to know the God of the Bible. I want to know the God that, <laughs> that gave Job double for his trouble. Huh? I want to know the God that told Paul, listen, you go. I want to know the God that used a donkey to speak to a servant. I want to know the God that knocked Paul off of his beast and caused his scales to fall from his eyes. I want to know that God. I want to know the God that told these people, listen, I'm glad Lazarus is dead because I'm getting ready to show you something that you probably never thought you would see. I want to know the God that comes sometimes at the 11th hour and gives me a miracle because a miracle is something that no man can do. A lot of times we're looking for light bills to be paid. That's not a miracle. Oh, OK. I'm just saying. A miracle is something that no man can do. I want to see cancer be healed when there is no cure. I want to see AIDS and HIV diagnoses. I want to see those things be reversed. Why? Because I'm getting to know that God, the God that heals. I want to get to know the God that promised us that greater works we would do. I want to go to a funeral and see a person that's already been embalmed, that's landed with all that makeup on, rise up and say, listen, God has given me an extension of grace and time and there's still more work for me to do. That's the God that I want to know. A lot, of this, a lot of times the God that we present to people is a sad, pathetic excuse for the real God that we serve. But because we don't know him, we can't give them who he is. We can't present him correctly because we don't know him. And at the end of the day, the one thing that I, I, I kept saying, and even I'll probably be saying it for the rest of this week, is that he is God. Whether we accept it or not, when we're too crazy or too foolish or too stupid, hey, I'm male to believe or to receive or to accept the fact that he is God, he is still God. Even in those moments, he's God. When our world seemed to, to, to be crumbling and falling apart under the pressure of life, he's still God. And he's not moved by what moves us. He said, yeah, you don't serve a God that cannot be felt with the feelings of your infirmity. But even on the, on the plus side of that, I'm not moved because I already know what's going on. And if you had talked to me about it, or if you had got in my presence long enough, I could have spoken to you about it so that you would have known what to pray and how to pray. So maybe some of the things that you're currently facing would not have happened. Oh, okay. But nobody wants to know that God. Nobody wants to know the God that gives you warning about the things that are going to happen in your life before they happen. We would just rather wait for things to pop off in our lives and then go to him and say, God, listen, I need you to get me out of this. But could it be that some of the things that we're in, we didn't have to go in if we had gotten to know God? Not the healer, not, not the healer alone, not the deliverer alone, not the way maker alone, but the fullness of him. As much as I can handle, give me that. Listen. <laughs> there's a song I mean I'll probably play that because we're getting ready to come to a close by Shane and Wilson they said listen give me you everything else can wait excuse me give me you I hope I'm not too late and all she kept saying is listen Lord give me you that's my prayer listen give me you because at the end of the day once I get you I get everything else that I need once I get you I get everything else that I desire or that I want but if I don't have you, then I don't have anything. If I don't have you, then the things that I need, I'm missing out on some stuff because I don't have you. I have you as a deliverer, but now I need you as strength and as sanity. I need you as clarity because I'm confused. But if I only get to know you for who you are, then I, or, or, for, for what you can do, then I get to miss, I'm missing out on some things. And you never want to get to a place where you're identifying or, or where you're claiming a person to be somebody based on what they do. Let me break that down. I don't ever want to get to a place where my grandmother is my bailer out of when I need her to bail me out of something or when I need her to assist me. But I want to know her as my grandmother. The loving, funny, crazy, silly, going to say anything out of her mouth person. You see what I'm saying? But in me knowing her, I know that if I need her, she'll be right there. 
I don't want to just know my mom as the loud mouth preacher and screamer that'll preach you down and shout you crazy. I want to know her for the loving, extra, extra, extra loving, sometimes loving to a fault person, you know, caring, just willing to give you the shirt off of her back, even if she don't have another one. That person, because when I get to know her for who she is, then I get to I get to know when and when I can uh, when and where I can call on her to help me out. But if I only ident if I make her identity what she does and not who she is, then I'm missing out. A lot of times, what I found out is that we are making God who uh, we're, we're making what He does who He is, and that's a poor representation of all that He is. We're only getting a portion. We're only getting a portion of who He is when we do that. But He's saying, "Listen, I want to give you me more than I want to give you a house." More than I want to give you a car. More than I want to give you all of these things, a degree and schooling. and That's great. And I do desire to give you those things. But above all, I want to give you me. Because when you get me, you get everything that I have. When you get me, you get everything that I possess. When you get me, you get power. You get authority. You get wisdom. You get discernment. You get clarity. You get healed. You get delivered. You get salvation. You get everything that you need simply when you get me. Hey, Elder Horsey, but do you want me enough to get me in that way? Do you want me enough to sometimes wait and to suffer sometimes and suffer through some things in order to get me? The children of Israel, before God came to them, they had to suffer. Moses had to go through some exile before he began to, or before he got into a place where he was able to know God. But are you willing to go through in order to know him? There are, there are two ways that we get to know God. Number one, by experience. And number two, by revelation. And when my revelation of him, when my revelation of him gets stale, I need a new experience. But I need to experience something else in order to get a fresh revelation. But do you want to know me that way? That's the question for tonight. Do you want to know God in the fullness of who he is? I hope I'm not too late to get to know you because I know that there are some things that you have. There are some things about you that I don't know. There are some ways that I uh, that I may have only heard about, but I've not seen for myself. So give me you. Whatever that means, whatever it costs, whatever that takes, give me you. If I've got to lose some friends, if I've got to lose some connections, if I've got to lose some partnerships, give me you because I know at the end of it, whatever I lose, it will pale in comparison to the reward that I get from being in your presence. It will all, listen, it will seem like nothing when you put it on the scale. When you say the things of this world or my relationship with God and getting to know him, wh wh where do those things weigh in your life? You see what I'm saying? At that point, nothing else matters. Why? Because I have God and I understand that no man is an island and that we can't do this thing. But Vicki Winans got it right when she said, listen, as long as I have him and I know him, all this other stuff I don't necessarily need. You see what I'm saying? Because when I get him, I get all the things that I need. You see what I'm saying? Give me you. Whatever I have to do to get there. Whatever it takes. That's what I need to do. <laughs> God, I thank you. I made my prayer closet song. Because listen, you try to listen to this in public, you'll be jacked up. <laughs> I mean, in a full jack up. I didn't even get to the other scripture. But the ones that we read, uh, the, the few verses that I read, tonight, they're all talking about the same thing. I am God and beside me there is not another. Do you want God? Do you want to know him? And even in the moments where you start to feel like, you know what, stuff in my life just ain't going right. I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand what's going on. Remember and remind yourself that he's still God. In him being God is the fact that he's sovereign and that he's got everything under control. In him being God is the fact that he is wise and that he will not make a mistake. In him being God is the fact that he can do anything but fail. But are you willing to get to know him like that? Uh, this last song we're going to play and then we're going to close up. William McDowell has a song that says, listen, all I want is you. And he says that the reward of worship is God. He said, listen, all these other things come, but at the end of the day... All I really want is God. That's it. I, I get it. There are a lot of other things that I could get. There are a lot of other things that I could desire and that I even do desire. But if I don't get those things, I need to get God.
I need to get into a place where I'm in his presence enough so that when I get his presence, when he manifests and when he shows himself to me, that I can receive his presence as he is. But do you want to know him that way? Somebody deleted my song from my computer. Do you want to know him that way? Is God really all that you want? Or are you still seeking these other things? Not knowing that when you get these other things or when you get God, I'm sorry, you get these other things with him. You get these other things when you when you get him. But do you want him in that way? I'm sorry. I, I, th listen, and th I had to share this. I had planned to do something else. I'm sorry for tonight, for tonight's Tuesday talks. But I literally had to come on the show because, listen, this thing has literally been wrecking me for probably about the past two days. He is God. When I don't acknowledge him, when I'm too crazy to act like I know who he is, when I'm too busy to acknowledge him, when I, listen, when the stuff in my life just don't seem fair, when it doesn't seem fair, when it doesn't seem right, when I don't understand it, he is still God. All I want is you. And I understand that when I get you, I get everything that I need. And even some of the things that I want. But you're all I want. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. Listen, there's so many songs that I could play that go back to this. But listen, when we get it, when we put our focus back on him and receiving him, then all the other things that we desire, they come as a result. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. If I'm going to school... For a specific degree, as long as I know that I'm getting my degree, all the other things come. Like I have to go get I have to go through those things to get the degree. But it's 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 inevitable. I cannot take the classes and not get my degree. I can't take the classes and pass them and not get my diploma and not get my degree. The only way I don't get it is if I fall short somewhere. If I do what I'm supposed to do to the best of my ability, I study to show myself approved and I do all the things, you know, I complete the assignments on time, in time. Listen, it says, you are my reward. I could ask for a lot of stuff. You can be healed in the present, but he's the reward. The healing is a secondary benefit. You see what I'm saying? He's the prize. All I want is you. And that's the place that we've got to get to. Understanding that he is God. And beside him, there is not another. So anything that we are seeking can only be found in him. Anything that we're desiring can only be found in him. And it's not until we go after him and it's not until we passionately pursue him and we say, God, hey, uh, Overseer Rodney, but it's not until we say, listen, God, show me all of you. Show me as much as I can handle. Show me all of you in the godness of you. Show me the God component of you so that I can know who I am. And in me knowing who I am, I see a reflection of you. Because when I get to know you, I become more like you. So then when people see me, I'm leading them back to you. It's a cycle. When I get to know God, God can show me who I am and how nasty I am and how much I don't line up with his character. And then when I see that, I make those changes. And then when my life changes, I go on the outside of these four walls. I go to the outside of the church and I start showing people the genuine love of God and then they say, you know what? I want to know the God that you serve. But that doesn't happen. The kingdom is not expanded if we don't get to know him for who he is. He is God. And at the end of the day, the beginning of the day and all the time and spaces in between, he's still God. Whether we acknowledge it or not. And in him being God is him being faithful. He's loving. He's just. He is true. Listen, there's not been one promise that he made me that fell to the ground. Ever. And I do not believe that it will happen. I've shared with you all, I think probably a couple months ago, probably several months ago at this point. Um, one of the promises that the Lord made me, and it's been painful sometimes, but he has not fallen short of his word. And I'm like, God, I wish you had made me another promise. But because this is the promise that you made me. In me knowing you, I understand that you are true and that the things that you say, I can look for it to happen. If you tell me that I'm going to be healed, then I'm looking for my healing to happen. And even if it doesn't manifest the way that I think it should, the time that I think it should, or by the method that I think it should, I know that when it comes, it's going to come and it's going to be complete. Because I know you and I know that you don't do anything halfway. I know you and I know that you don't do anything just a little bit. Whenever you do something, you go the full mile. You go all the way with it. And so I'm just believing that whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you're going to do, you're going to do it. Simply because you're God. And now we, we get to a place where we say, you know what? 
I honor you just because you're God. This is the last song, and I promise you we're going to leave. <laughs> I promise you we're going to leave after this. But this is song that says, listen, I honor you just because you're God. Not for what you can do. Not for what you have done. Not, for, not, not because I want you to do something for me in this moment. But just because of who you are. I honor you just because you're God. That's it. You're God and I honor you. You're God and I worship you. You're God and I bow before you. Why? Because you're God. And in you being God is something great and awesome and wonderful for me to experience. It's, it's a privilege for me to experience your Godness. It's a privilege for you to be God in my life. It's a privilege for you to work in my life on my behalf in this way. And even if you don't do the things that I want you to do, if you never give me the things, the material things that I desire, you are still God. And that's enough. You're God enough for me and that's it. I'm fine with you being God because when I get to know you, you satisfy the longing in my soul. You satisfy the empty parts of me that I've been trying to fill with other things and with other people. When I get you, I'm full and I'm whole. I honor you right now. Listen, when I say this song right here will literally take you out. When you start to think about it, just because he's God. Just because of who he is. Because he's faithful. Do you understand? And even when you start to break down the attributes of him, the little glimpses that he shows us of him in those attributes is still not enough. Because in him being faithful, do you know how many ways and how many times, even the things that we don't even know that he's protected us from, proves his faithfulness. Every car accident, every layoff, every demotion, every pay cut, every bullet, every, every anything, the things that we don't even know were about to happen to us, he's proven himself to be faithful in that. And, he, and, and then the things that we do know that he's been faithful in, we still have to declare that he's faithful. Because you've been faithful to keeping your promises. You've been faithful to com uh, to completing your word concerning me and to perfecting that those things that concern me. You've been faithful in that. So even with the little mini assets and the facets of him that we've seen, that's still not enough for us to fully comprehend the godness of him. So I just wanted to encourage somebody to let you know that he is God. Whether you believe and whether your, whether your circumstances say it or not, whether your circumstances dictate it or not, he is still God. So as you go throughout this week, as you go throughout this month, whatever it is, the rest of your life, remind yourself when things don't look ideal, when things don't go the way that you think that they should go, that he is still God. He sits on the circle of the earth and he's like, listen, I'm here. I'm God. Whether you believe it or not, I'm still God. Whether you accept it or not, I'm still God. And I'm faithful. I'm just. I'm true. I'm loving. I am compassionate. I am everything that you need it's literally wrapped up in me if you would allow me to be God for you I'll show you do you want him to be God and if so find the time to get to him find a way to get to him and I guarantee you things won't always be easy but your life will be better for uh, on, on the back end because you know him when we go through suffering without God it's difficult when we go through suffering with God, it's difficult, but we have hope because we know God and we serve Him and we love Him. All right? Just wanted to encourage somebody that even when things don't look ideal, He is still God. He was God when the, uh, when the circumstance started. He'll be God while the situation is going on. And He'll be God when it comes to an end. And He's the God that brings it to an end. Why? Because he's God. Alright, I feel like you're ready to get caught up and taken under a wave. <laughs> so I'm going to end this right here, right now. Um, before we go, I want to invite anybody that's on here to the Ascension Conference. It's coming up July 7th and 8th. Registration is only $20. That's not a lot. You spend that in a week. Some of us spend that in a day. I know when I was buying lunch every day, I was spending probably $20 a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Somewhere around there. Only twenty dollars that covers your breakfast, that covers your day sessions on Saturday, all of those things. But listen, let me tell you something. I was typing up. Uh, the Lord started sharing some things with me last night about cycles and circles and things like that. Steps to ascension. Listen, when I tell you, I literally almost got on Facebook Live last night just because I was so excited, but I had to contain it because I'm not fully finished developing the uh, the packet yet. But listen, the ascension conference is something that you want to get to. It's going to be a time of literally ascension. God said, listen, I'm getting ready to graduate my people. I'm taking them up. Hey, uh, 
D. He said, listen, I'm getting ready to take my people up to a higher place and I'm getting ready to show them what it's going to take to sustain in this next level. Um, you've probably seen the flyer all on my page. You can register via PayPal. If you want to sponsor somebody's registration, inbox me somehow. Let me know so that we can make sure that we get this. We're trying to start the registration early so that we can get a head count so that we'll know how many of the materials we need to prepare for, how much food we need to prepare for. If you're going, if you don't have the $20 tonight, if you don't have it right away, inbox me. Let me know so that we can start making plans to prepare for this great and awesome move of God. Um, Friday Night Power will be back in August. Um, this month, I wanted to uh, postpone it because we're preparing for the Ascension Conference. And in July, I'll be out of town. But we're going to hit it hard again in August. My sister and I, we're going to partner up and we're just going to do a night of worship. It is going to be simply amazing. All right, more information about the Ascension is coming. We've got some special guest psalmists, some special people coming to sing and to minister to us. And so I'm believing that God is really going to show himself strong and mighty. My speakers, the panelists and all of those things, they've come and they've been, uh, they've been inboxing me and texting me all week, all month, just about saying, listen, I'm ready for the Ascension to come so that we can all go higher. I told people, I said, listen, those of us that are on the panel, we've already had, uh, we had to have a, our own personal ascension experience because you can't teach somebody about a place that you've not been to. You can't teach somebody how to get to a place that you're still trying to maneuver and figure out yourself. So I'm guaranteeing you and I'm promising you that during this time of prayer, worship, the word, that there's going to be something heavy that drops in the atmosphere that will literally set your soul ablaze and cause your life to be changed forever. All right. So meet me there at the ascension. Friday Night Power is coming back third Friday in August. And if anything else comes up in between now and then, I will be sure to let you all know. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're seven minutes over, so we want to make sure that we pray and get you guys um, off of here. I'm going to try to do, hey, Pastor Snowden, I'm going to try to do another one tomorrow with one of the guests for or from the Ascension. Um, so we'll try to do that um, tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, we'll try to get it in sometime this week. I know everybody has a different schedule. Um, but we want to make sure so that you guys can start to hear a little bit. They're not going to give you everything. Love you too, Lamia. They're not going to give you everything. Then you won't want to come to the conference. But they're just going to share some brief tidbits and some snippets of the things that the Lord has been sharing with them about what's going to happen at the Ascension. And hopefully that will charge your spirit enough to come and to be there and join in the worship experience with us during that time. All right. So we're going to pray. And then I'm going to go on and uh, start working on my Ascension notes. <laughs> Uh, Pastor Snowden, we're getting ready to close, but thanks so much for tuning in. I miss you so much. Um, I'll inbox you because there's a question I need to ask you. Um, but yeah, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember that no matter what's going on, he is still God. And when you get to know him, all the things that we've been pining after, all the attributes and all those other things and the ways that we've been trying to get to know him, all of those things are literally locked up in us knowing him as God. All right. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, we give you glory, we give you honor because you're God and because you're good. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being faithful. We thank you for being righteous and just and true and loving. We thank you for all that you are. We're praying tonight, Father, that somebody was encouraged by the video. God, that those that would watch this video, that did watch this video, God, that they would be encouraged. Oh, God, and that you would remind somebody that you are still God and apart from you, there is no other. And that everything we need can be found in you. And we're praying, oh God, that you would touch somebody's life. Oh God, that if they don't know you, that they would come to get to know you and the pardon of their sins. God, that you would allow us all to be changed. That you would give us the filter, even as you did unto Moses. That they would all see a glow about us that says that we've been in your presence. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right? So, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you all tomorrow, hopefully. I just need to see who is able to join in with me. Uh, we'll probably do like a 30-minute power word type of thing. Um, and then we'll be back the rest of the weeks and nights and all of that other stuff. All right? So, uh, love you guys so, so much. Thanks again. Tuesday Church was amazing. <laughs> um, no problem, Rob. I hope that you were blessed. And I hope this helps us get through the rest of this week at school and at work. And the rest of the summer months because we got summer school coming up. <laughs> all right. I love you guys. And I'll see you all tomorrow. All right? Bye-bye.